Hi there, everyone. So we've been working on value. Um, we just finished these simple exercises in charcoal. And we're going to try and do it again, but with a, a more specific object and an actual light source. And we're going to do it with graphite. Um, so let's start by testing this out in our sketchbook and not just starting with the actual rendering, but using some of the techniques that we had used earlier in the semester where we did a little gesture, we did a little blind contour so that we can familiarize ourselves with our subject. I'm going to just use a simple pair, but if you wanted to use something more complicated, um, have at it. Whatever you think could work as, a, as an interesting um, subject, a shoe, a handbag, a backpack, a coffee mug, um, anything you want. Actually, a coffee mug might be hard. You might want something with a little bit of um, complexity to it. Okay, so let's start with just a little gesture. Um, I'm going to use a um, 4B pencil and I'm going to hold it on its side, sharpen it a little. With, I'm going to use an overhand grip, not a writing grip, so that I can just really quickly kind of um, work out the shape. I did take a photo of it and turned it into black and white, and I'll use this as reference here in a little bit when I start to do the rendering with the graphite, adding the value. But for now, I want to try and practice my observational skills. I think I'm going to prop up my book a little. So these are just some kind of trial run gestures. I'm kind of looking at this, the subject. I'm going to start with like a basic understanding that mapping and measuring. So I'm kind of measuring what would I assume would be the top of the pair. <clears throat> Measure out maybe where I think the bottom would be. And then I'm going to do some of that measuring that I had done before. If I'm going to say that that's the height of it, I need to see how wide the pair is. So I'm going to measure the width is a little more than half. So I'm going to do that was half, a little more than half. So I kind of map it out <clears throat> and then my pair is definitely at an angle. So before I even try to draw it in, I kind of have a problem because I have the map mark, the mark for my map making here, um, like directly underneath. And I think I need to move it over. <clears throat> um, I'm going to draw, I took the angle of the pair and it really sits a little more like this. So I, I don't, I'm not going to move that. So I'm just going to move this over meaning the bottom of the pair might be more over here. Um, and then I have to move these guys over. <clears throat> so that's where I'm just kind of getting into the mapping and measuring just to check and see where I might want these um, forms to sit. And that kind of gets that basic understanding of it. Now I'm going to try and do that thing where I had used the very basic shapes. And I can see at the top of my pair, <clears throat> that kind of looks like a little bit of a trapezoid at the top. So again, this is just getting like basic sets of information. Kind of drops down into a, a cone and then widens out drops down, curves in. I'm using a lot of straight lines. Just to kind of get the, the feel for it and then I can build on top of it. <clears throat> I'm just going to check my angle again. Check my height and my width again. <clears throat> Feel 
comes a little fat. Something like this. Um, now that I have these as a kind of beginning space, I'm gonna figure out how long my stem is. So I think I'll just use like this distance from here to see how long that is. Yeah, it was a good guess. So from about here to here, it's about the width of my, or the length of my stem. And then I have to kind of figure out the angles of how it sits in space. It kind of bends back. <clears throat> So now that I have the gesture, um, I'm gonna go in and kind of clean it up with my continuous line contour drawing to see if I can get a more accurate kind of understanding of the form. Again, this is just a working drawing. I'm trying not to be real sketchy. I'm trying to do a more of a continuous line so like 90% of my eye is on the actual pair, not on the drawing. Not a complete <coughs> blind contour, but spending a lot of time looking. I start to work into the interior of the pair and I'm not going to pick up my pencil. I want to just map it out. Correcting kind of as I go, trying to use a cross contour to help me figure out distances. So I'm kind of drawing through the form. Again, it's more like a map. <clears throat> kind of seeing where there's some darks and some lights. I'll come back up here, try to get that little bit of complexity with the stem. I'm gonna make the stem top a little bigger than what I think it is. Okay, kind of lightly erase out my gesture. I don't mind if it's there so much. I'm just gonna get rid of a little bit of the marks to help me make sure that I like where it's going. <clears throat> this looks a little too smooth. And then I want it to sit down. We learned when we worked on these that if I don't have a form sitting in space, um, just floating on the page, that it feels like it sits down. So we put these lines through it. And I'm gonna have this line where the box meets the mixed media board behind it. I'm gonna see what kind of angle it's at. So it's a little bit above horizontal, like at 245 maybe. I might actually use my ruler here just to make sure. Oops, I made my thing move. Ah. Apparently that was sitting on my ruler. There we go. Um, and then I'm gonna look on my pair and go up and down and see where it intersects on the pair that it's not way up high, it's not way down low, but where it actually sits. It's a little different in my vision. So I'm gonna lower it a little bit. <clears throat> I'm gonna start to now look for the shadows because I've just, by these two simple lines, been able to figure out um, the ground plane that it's sitting on. I'm gonna look and see on the side of the pair where that shadow comes out so you can kind of see where it hits. Just kind of gesture it in first using these straight edges 
before I put the curves in. Something about putting these straight shapes, these basic shapes in help um, it look more believable and less kind of fluffy. And then there's a second round of shadow that gets lighter and kind of dissipates out. <clears throat> I can kind of re-establish it just through a contour. There we go. So this is just our working drawing, just to kind of get us started. It's a bit of a darker bit that I want to tell myself about here. So I will, I will really render this on another sheet here in a minute. So just some little notes. I think my highlight kind of goes here, gets a little darker in here. So I'm separating out now some of the value shifts. I kind of can squint my eyes and see how it would start to unfold. If you look back at the reading, there's a photograph of an apple that has a numbering system on it. Um, in the past, um, or not in the past, but in the reading, I had talked about how often I will think of 100 as the darkest, 50 as the middle, zero as the lightest or the white, um, and that a strong drawing often works out pretty well if you use this value spread, 170, 50, 30, 10. And it'll be a little choppy, but if you wanted it to be more subtle, then you would have to add your 90s, 80s, 60s, 40s, 20s, and so forth, and that could help make it smoother. But when I break it down like this, then I can say, this will be my zero, this will be my zero. This gets into like a 30. This could be like a 10 might be a 15. I'm kind of squinting my eyes, make this a 30 so it balances with this. I might bring this down even darker into a 40. Say a 25. I'm kind of making these up. <clears throat> 20, 30, 40. So you kind of get the picture. That's a zero. This could be a 20, maybe a 15, 10, 30, 40. This could be like a 90, 70, 40. So you kind of have a sense of how the, the form will work. I can see that my light source is coming kind of down here and here a little bit. So I've got like these zeros. That would put a little highlight right here, around a 10 maybe. <clears throat> so you can start to see with those cross contours and building it out this way that you're starting to kind of understand how the form will sit in space. So I'll hang on to this knowledge and then I'm gonna try and really draw it on the Good Mix Media Board um, with this set of information. Okay, so I'm gonna switch. I'll, I, you know what, at this point I'll turn the video off and then I'll switch to using the mixed media board where we'll practice drawing this figure um, with the graphite in a more resolved way. Um, and like I said, your job now is to go figure out what you're gonna draw. So a simple fruit or um, a matchbox car, a shoe, um, anything you want that's a little more complicated. If you wanted to try to draw your hand, you could. Um, but we'll, we'll start with something like this. Okay, I'll see you in a second. Mm -hmm. 